Welcome to LTHS Physics. Uh, right now we're going to do a problem involving uh, energy and momentum. Uh, this, is, uh, this involves uh, chapters 8 and 9 in your textbook. Uh, so uh, this one's kind of simple. Uh, we'll do something, we'll do it with variables and then we'll throw in numbers when we need to. So a uh, real simple one. I got a, a ramp. Uh, I got a little car on the ramp on wheels. We'll call that little m. Okay, and he's going to knock into a cart that has a mass big M. Okay, this is on a table. Okay, um, it's going to be an elastic collision. And basically, what I want to know is oh, uh, some other stuff. This is the height. So this guy falls at height H before he knocks into this dude. And then the height of the table, we'll call that delta Y. So here's what I want to figure out. When these guys knock into each other, where does this guy land? Where does he hit the ground from the base of the table? Okay. Uh, now here are the numbers for you. Uh, we got little m is 2 kilograms. Big M is 3 kilograms. The height, h over there, is 2 meters. And delta y is 3 meters. So you got a bunch of twos and threes in this problem. All right, so we're asking for how far is that, which would be delta x, okay? So uh, first things first, so I got to know, well, how fast is that little dude going when he hits the big dude? Uh, now I got one object moving from A to B, so I'm going to use conservation of energy. When one object goes from one point to another, you use energy. So that one's pretty simple. You got little mgh turning into kinetic energy, which is one-half little mv squared. Little, little m's drop out and you get v is root 2gh. And we can get a number off that. Um, you get root 2 times 9.8 times the height which was 2. Uh, so that's roughly root 40 just under that. And if you do the math you get 6.26 uh, meters per second. So that's the speed with which the little guy strikes the big guy. Okay. Now they're colliding. Okay. When two objects interact, you want to use conservation of momentum. So the total momentum bef right before the impact is going to equal the total momentum after the impact. Well, before the impact, you just had little dude, which is little m, moving with root 2gh, which I've got a number for. Afterward, I've got little m moving with some velocity that I don't know. I'll call that a, okay, plus the big m moving with some velocity, and I call that vl. So va was just little dude after the collision. And VL, that's the big dude, that's his launch velocity. So that's why I call that VL, okay? Um, now I got numbers for these. Um, we know the mass. Little guy is 2. We know this is 6.26. This is 2VA plus 3VL. Um, and then you get 12.52 equals 2VA plus 3VL. So we got a, an equation there. Problem is we got two unknowns. Now, um, in class, we derived what we call a shortcut formula for uh, using only in elastic collisions. So for an elastic collision, uh, we know not only is momentum conserved, but we also know that they're special because kinetic energy is conserved. So um, if you do some math with kinetic energy and with momentum, you get the following shortcut formula. I'll write that over here you get VA minus VB before the collision equals the, the negative of VA minus VB after the collision. So I'll put finals there. Okay, so the, the impact velocity is opposite to rebound velocity, basically. Um, having said all that, um, we can kind of put variables with this. Uh, VA, um, that was the little dude which was 6.26 VB. Well, he wasn't moving before the impact. Um, after the impact, you've got VA final, which we called VA. 
uh, minus VB final, which we called VL. Okay, and so you got 6.26 equals negative VA plus VL. So there's our second equation with the same two unknowns uh, we can solve. Um, for, there's a lot of ways you can solve this. I'm going to double this and then add it to this equation. So you get 12.52 equals negative 2VA plus 2VL. If you add that equation to this one, you get uh, two times that. You get 25.04 equals your negative 2VA and your positive 2VA drop out, and you get 5VL. So now we know the launch velocity. Uh, I got um, basically 5.0 meters per second. Yeah, 25 divided by 5, roughly. Um, now, if you wanted to, you could plug this in and get your VA, either there or there. Um, he, the little dude, if you do that, and I went ahead and did that, I got VA is negative 1.24. So you don't need that for this problem, but it's kind of cool to know. So there's your VA, negative 1.24. Now, by the way, I'm making a quick note. If these two dudes had been the exact same mass, when this dude, little dude gets to here, or when the first dude gets to there, he's going 6.26. If their masses had been identical, what would, what would have happened to this dude? Well, it's like a pool ball hitting uh, another pool ball. This guy would have stopped, and this guy would have launched with a velocity of 6.26. They would have basically traded, traded spots. Um, because this dude is bigger, he doesn't go flying off quite that fast. He goes flying off at 5 instead of 6.26. And little dude rebounds a little bit because he's smaller. Okay. Uh, now, once we got that, the rest of the problem is pretty easy because now it's a projectile motion problem. Okay. So now you've got one object moving. Um, you really can't use conservation of energy uh, because you've got to know something about where he's landing. So we use kinematics. Um, so in the, we can look at the vertical direction, and we know that delta y equals v y naught t plus one half a t squared. Since he's launching horizontally, we know v y naught is zero. You get t is root two delta y over a is g in this case. So you got root two, three over 9.8. If you plug and chug in your calculator, you should get a time of um, point. 7.82 seconds. Okay, so it's in the air for about three quarters of a second. And then where does he land? Well, now that's horizontal motion, and we just use delta x equals vxt. There's no acceleration horizontally, so we don't have to worry about that. We know vx, that was vl, that was our launch velocity, which was 5. And then um, we got 0 0.782 seconds, and you get uh, 3.91 meters approximately. Um, now, by the way, I kept the numbers in the calculator. That's why if you take this times this, you won't get exactly that. I kept the numbers in the calculator and got that. Um, so there's an example of using conservation of energy and uh, momentum uh, to solve a problem regarding the motion of m multiple objects in the system. Uh, thank you very much.